warm welcome to all of you for this month's Shanti Devi Memorial Health Justice Lecture. Welcome to our distinguished speaker, Dr. Helisus Getahun. Uh, Shanti Devi Memorial Health Justice Lecture Series is a series of online lectures, e-talks, exploring intersectoral solutions for specific health problems. Health is an outcome, influencer, and enabler of sustainable development. So do we believe. Without any further ado, I would like to introduce uh, in fact before I introduce Dr. Helis Gatahun, who is who who is will be doing this lecture series, I would like to I would like to tell you something about the Shanti Devi Memorial Health Justice Lecture Series. Mrs. Shanti Devi Shankar was born in rural Uttar Pradesh, India. And despite challenges of social and economic inequalities fueled by gender disparities, she not only boldly confronted these stereotypes but also lived her life by upholding values and having a life influencing impact on others. She passed away on 21st December 2006. Shanti Devi Memorial SDM Health Justice Lecture Series featured noted health experts from around the world who have devotedly worked on specific health issues and interlinkages within health sector as well as between health and non-health sectors. The focus of each lecture is to explore solutions that require intersectoral collaboration for improving specific program outcomes. This month's lecture will be delivered by Dr. Helises Getahun, coordinator of TB, HIV and community engagement at the WHO Global Tuberculosis Program. Dr. Getahun leads efforts to scale up the implementation of collaborative TB HIV, community based TB activities, and integration of TB into maternal, newborn, and child health services at the WHO. Earlier, he coordinated and served as the lead writer for the global WHO interim policy on collaborative TB HIV activities. The revised recommendations for improving the diagnosis of TB among people living with HIV, the WHO policy on TB screening and prevention among people living with HIV, as well as the WHO policy on the management of latent TB infection. He has also contributed to the development of antiretroviral therapy and TB treatment guidelines of WHO. In October 2011, Dr. Getahun was awarded the prestigious International Union Scientific Prize for his work on TB and HIV associated TB. I would now like to invite Dr. Helises Getahun to present, please. Over to you, Dr. Getahun. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for this opportunity and for the generous uh, introduction. And uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to do this uh, memorial uh, lecture series and um, just before I start my presentation I would like to remind uh, participants on the core WHO functions that is stipulated in its constitution and as you know the first and the most important role of WHO is to be uh, a directing and coordinating agency for global health as well as providing also developing policy norms and standards for anything related to health and it also provide technical support and coordination uh, for implementation uh, and monitoring and evaluation as well as promoting and conducting research and finally the one of the core function of WHO is to facilitate partnership and collaboration. So with that introduction the outline of my presentation uh, will be I will provide the basics of TBHIV magnitude and the, ba and, uh, the basic signs as well as HIV associated TB and I will also discuss progress challenges in global health uh, and the global response. So when we look at the global magnitude of TB and HIV, uh, as you can see from this slide, we uh, estimated approximately uh, between a quarter to a third of the global population is infected uh, with the mycobacteria that causes TB 
which we call latently infected, which equates about 2 billion population. And there are also nearly 37 million estimated people living with HIV. And in 2015, there were 10.4 million new TB cases. Uh, in contrast, there were 1.8 million new HIV infections. When we look into the days, uh, TB kills uh, 1.8 million, which includes also the almost 400,000 people who died of uh, HIV, and that also gives 1 million TB, uh, HIV days. Both TB and HIV are among the top 10 causes of death worldwide. As you can see from uh, this uh, slide, uh, TB actually rank above HIV, which makes it the commonest infectious disease uh, that causes uh, deaths with 1.8 uh, million. And as you can see from this, uh, when we looked in, into the uh, deaths that are attributable to HIV, it goes to 1.8. This slide shows the uh, comparison of the estimated TB incidence in 2015 and the adult HIV prevalence between the ages of 15 to 49. As you can see from this slide, much of the dark, you know, in both slides, in both graphs, the dark uh, shows uh, increased uh, incidence and increased intensity of the problem. And as you can see, Sub-Saharan Africa is mostly affected by both and TB incidence as well as HIV prevalence. Whereas also the Southeast Asian part is also the same, having the highest uh, TB incidence as well as also increasing, you know, HIV prevalence as you can see compared to the rest of the uh, globe. When we look into the actual uh, distribution of TB and HIV cases, of the 10.4 million uh, TB cases estimated in 2015, Southeast Asia uh, actually attributes to 46%, and if you add also the Western Pacific WH origin, which makes it it's the whole of Asia, almost 60% of uh, TB cases are estimated to live in the Asia region, which the rest goes to a quarter goes to Africa and the remaining 15% goes to the, the rest of the regions. Again, when we looked into the HIV distribution of those people living with HIV estimated globally, 37 million, uh, almost uh, two thirds or 26 million are living in Africa. Uh, which also followed by Asia, again, if you, you know, include both Southeast Asia and Western Pacific regions, that gives you almost 6 million of the burden. What about the basics of HIV and TB? And this is just to show you, this is a, a microbacteria, you know, high resolution uh, uh, slide that shows uh, uh, microbacteria that causes TB. It is transmitted by air droplets and there are also several types of uh, microbacteria, but the two that causes uh, human disease are Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Myco Mycobacterium bovis. Mycobacterium bovis is the one that is often go, uh, is, cont is contracted through uh, ingestion of mostly raw meat and that causes um, uh, more intestinal uh, and abdominal uh, TB. And the Mycobacteria was discovered in 1882 by a German uh, researcher called Robert Koe. HIV is a very slowly replicating retrovirus and it is transmitted by body fluids and there are two types of HIV, HIV 1 and 2, and it was discovered in 1983. Latency, which means the presence of non-replicating or you know, a bacteria or virus is common in both HIV and TB. As you can see from this slide, up to 80% of patients on optimal antiretroviral treatment or show persistently low level viremia, which actually is also a very challenge to bring the cure for HIV. 
similarly as for almost uh, of the two of the third global population uh, that is estimated to be infected we we can have between 5 to 15 percent can go and develop active disease and uh, this can happen mostly during their lifetime but up to 60 percent of those develop the disease uh, be, uh, within the first two years of infection. So what are the clinical features of TB? TB disease is usually affects the lung because it's uh, uh, transmitted by air droplets through sneezing or coughing so that brings uh, also the uh, mycobacteria into the lung parenchyma but it can also affect uh, other bodies which we often call extra pulmonary TB. The symptoms, the classical symptom for TB is persistent cough that lasts more than two to three weeks and with weight loss, fever, night sweats and coughing up blood and these symptoms uh, may be absent or less uh, prominent in people living with HIV. And also recent uh, prevalence surveys carried out in uh, many countries also showed that there may be uh, people who can come with less than uh, two, three, two, three weeks of cough. The HIV clinical features are summarized in a structured way based on the clinical staging of, of, of uh, HIV which you can also you know see it in much more detail in uh, uh, this uh, uh, guideline that is uh, posted on the web of WHO. Generally the stages are divided, the clinical features of HIV are divided into four and based on the magnitude and intensity of the clinical uh, conditions and clean starting from asymptomatic into a very serious uh, clinical stage four where uh, HIV wasting and uh, other uh, presentations are also included. So pulmonary TB uh, was categorized on stage uh, three whereas extra pulmonary based on the severity of the disease in HIV positives into uh, stage four. When we look into diagnosis, TB is still uh, diagnosed by bacteriological detection or it can be grown into a culture either in liquid or solid media and there are also new nucleic acid based tests and but still for many parts of the world the microscopy stays to be the main diagnostic tool for TB. Whereas HIV is diagnosed by antibody test, rapid point of care test by simple uh, finger prick or as you can see here it can also be uh, through um, oral uh, test, saliva test. And there are also antigen tests which actually detect the antigen of, uh, of, of the bacteria and there are also nucleic acid based tests. This is expert which is a nucleic acid a molecular test that can give uh, TB diagnosis uh, within 90 minutes uh, which uh, basically can expedite diagnosis and also use more uh, computerized mechanism. When we look into treatment of drugs susceptible to be uh, this is a 2017 update of the tuberculosis treatment guideline which is posted on the WHO website. So first line treatment for drugs susceptible to be in, often involved with four drugs, rifampicin, isoniazid, etambutol and pyrazinamide and it is a daily treatment with four drugs, you know, four two months followed by two drugs for four months, total duration of six months treatment. When we look into the treatment of drug resistant TB, uh, basically MDRTB means resistance of rifampicin and isoniazid or XDRTB which means MDR plus resistance to any fluoroquinolones plus at least one of the second line injectable drugs. And there are two ways approaches of drug, uh, drug resistant TB treatment. We have a shorter MDRTB regimen which was recently recommended that the duration lasts between 9 and 12 months and this is recommended for those uh, rifampicin resistant TB and MDR TB 
cases who are not previously treated with any of the second line drugs. And similarly, long, long, longer than their regimen of 20 months is recommended uh, for both rifampicin resistant and MDRTB uh, with five drugs for eight months intensive phase and 12 months for others. And these drugs are categorized according to uh, groups and the treatment, the longer treatment should at least include five drugs uh, which include spirazinamide or one drug from group A, one drug from group B or two drugs from group C drugs and when it is also XDR, MDR, when the susceptibility testing doesn't belong to this, we can also use group D treatment uh, drugs. The HIV treatment is updated in 2016. Now everyone, well, as soon as they are diagnosed with uh, uh, HIV, they should be offered uh, ART and ART should be initiated and this is regardless of WHO clinical stage uh, or the, C, the, C, uh, or the CD4 cell count. And also the, there are first line and second line and third line you know, treatment which can also be found in this guideline. When we look into the progress that has been done in TB, both in incidence and TB HIV mortality, you can also see that uh, there is uh, gradual uh, reduction in incidence of uh, uh, TB uh, over the years, particularly in the last uh, uh, two decades after the introduction of the uh, DOS strategy and uh, which later was also stop TB strategy and then now the NTB strategy and this also shows the reduction in HIV positive TB cases and this uh, very significant drop in mortality over the last two decades. When we look also at HIV testing care and continuum and this is also to show uh, so there are 37 million out of these 25 million are aware of their HIV status and uh, almost 19 or 20 million are on treatment and 16 million are for viral suppression. And this is because of this um, very uh, significant and impressive scale up of ART coverage over, over the years. HIV is concentrated in nine countries, <coughs> contribute for almost 50% of the uh, HIV burden. So what about the interaction between TB and HIV? So the interaction of TB and HIV was first known in the early 80s when with, along with the first suspected cases of HIV where 11 out of 20 patients of those who were pres presented uh, in the first publication of um, suspected HIV were developed TB, out of which four died. And also, we also know immunologically there is interaction between TB and HIV. HIV promotes reactivation of latent TB and also TB increases HIV replication and enhances its viral replication at cellular level. And uh, also HIV positives have a higher risk of TB. And as you can see, this is because of the, as the CD4 cell count drops as uh, TB uh, because of the increased uh, CD4 uh, or uh, viral load, the uh, TB risk also increases. And because of this, TB still kills quite a lot of uh, people living with HIV. And this is a summary of the autopsy studies that shows actually uh, TB diseases among HIV positives can range between 63% uh, into a quarter. And these are all studies that were conducted. And this study by Gupta actually says a review of 36 studies that were conducted until 2012. And it shows up to 45% uh, were uh, undiagnosed before uh, days. 
TB is also the commonest cause of hospital admission among people living with HIV. And uh, this is a systematic review that was uh, conducted, uh, which actually shows when both children and adults, TB is the uh, commonest cause of in hospital mortality as well as morbidity. So why do people living with HIV die? Number one, we don't find them well. For those, we, by 2015, we only found 43% of the estimated HIV positive incident TB cases. And this also varies from country to country. There are countries which uh, only detect 6% like Angola uh, or us where in South Africa is the country with uh, the highest uh, detection of 61% of their estimated HIV cases. So this really variation among countries is also another reason which could be explained by the different uh, health system uh, structure and infrastructure of the uh, health facilities and the programs. So we do have the policy package. This is the WHO policy uh, that first was established in 2004 as an interim, which later was updated in 2012. And it has basically a set of 12 policy uh, interventions uh, that are responsibilities for both joint TB and HIV programs, as well as also a set of activities that are primarily responsibility for an HIV programs and uh, TB programs. So the implementation and of earlier initiation of ART can reduce TB among uh, people among HIV positives by 65%. And this is a systematic review that showed the difference uh, regardless of the CD4 count, the uh, reduction in TB is prominent. However, uh, only providing ART will not solve the TB problem. And this is also another study that actually shows the combined effect of isoniazid preventive treatment and ART. And um, it basically shows that uh, uh, even if people are treated uh, with ART, they still continue to have uh, ART, uh, TB risk. Provision. Uh, this is the uh, progress of IPT uh, globally between 2005 and 2015. And uh, also out of the 30 hyperdent countries, 21 didn't report this intervention, but there is a very significant increase, particularly after 2010 in the implementation. And uh, majority of those cases are coming from South Africa. And the rest of Africa is also showing increase. And with population uh, impact of providing ART and also is linked with less TB. And this is a study that was done in Malawi, which actually showed the number, the number of people living with HIV increased over the years in a blue line is associated with reduction in new TB cases among people living with HIV in red. So this also shows the importance of ART at a population level. And this is the graph that shows the gap. We still have a 57% gap of finding those people living with HIV uh, who will develop TB every, every year. And uh, this is, you know, despite, you know, the progress uh, that was mentioned earlier. And when we look into the cascade of uh, TB case detection, and uh, we can still see that the notified 10% are notified, up to 40% are uh, provided IPT, uh, so as a preventive treatment, but still nearly 50% gap in providing uh, the necessary intervention. The implementation of the TBHIV policy with the 12 package actually has significant impact over the last 15 years, as you can see, due to the implementation of those interventions, almost 10 million lives of people living with HIV were, were saved, and uh, this shows the regional 
uh, distribution. So that means we have the interventions really to reverse this epidemic. However, we have also limitations in the existing TB tools. Our diagnostic materials are mostly uh, still rely on microscopy, as I mentioned earlier, which is a more than 100 year old uh, tool. And the drugs are not much, and uh, we only have uh, two new drugs in the last you know, 40 years, and the vaccines are far, far away. So that's why we have developed a list of priority research questions because if we want to achieve uh, TB elimination as a public health, as a public health uh, intervention, it will be very um, difficult without research. So that's why we have these priority research questions. And again, we have also research priority questions to address the HIV associated TB. So, the good news, both TB and HIV are integral part of the Sustainable Development Commitment. As you can see from here in the Strategy Development Goal 3, both uh, TB and AIDS are mentioned to uh, end them as part of the end uh, uh, from public health concern. So the NTB strategy and has targets by 2020 and in blue and the, in red is the intermediate global health sector strategy uh, by 2020. So the target for TB is 35% reduction of TB days, 20% reduction of TB incidence and zero families of catastrophic cost. Whereas the target for HIV in 2020 will be a reduction of HIV related deaths to 500,000, new infections to 500,000 and zero infection among infants and also to test 90% of people and uh, get them uh, treated as well as virally suppress the so-called 1990-90 target. However, the ultimate target for 2030 for H the TB is a 90% reduction and for HIV uh, is less than uh, 200,000 HIV diseases. And uh, uh, it's uh, for TB, 80% reduction of TB incidence which actually give us less than 10 per 100,000 you know, population. And for HIV, it is intended to have less than 200 new HIV uh, infections. So that's why now for TB that we are saying that there is a glimmer of hope. And uh, last year, the uh, General Assembly, the UN General Assembly has called for the uh, high level meeting on TB in 2018. And uh, there will also be, as uh, was mentioned during the introduction, the first WHO Global Ministerial Meeting uh, next month in Moscow, which has um, eight teams, which you can see that team number seven here is also a stepped up TBHIV response. And the objective of this uh, ministerial meeting uh, is uh, to advance TB in uh, the context of universal health coverage, antimicrobial resistance, as well as sustainable development goals to ensure sustainable financing and commitment for research and innovation. And in conclusion, TB and HIV are of significant health problems. The sustainable development commitment provide momentum to end TB and HIV as public health concerns by 2030. And there are still uh, a lot of research gaps that needs to be addressed. And finally, no end AIDS without NTB and vice versa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Getahun, for a very lucid presentation, as always. And now I would like to invite Dr. Gilada to give his expert comments. Uh, Dr. Gilada has managed to be with us despite the heavy torrential outpour in Hyderabad, where he is currently there to host the ASICON 2017. So I would just like to briefly introduce Dr. Gilada who had chaired its 2014 session in Melbourne, Australia, which CNS co-hosted, and Dr. Getahun was on the panel of that. So you all are already well known to each other. 
Uh, Dr. Gilada is currently the National President of AIDS Society of India, a nationwide network of doctors of different specialties involved with HIV science as well as clinical management in public and private sector. Dr. Gilada is also the chair of the 2017 National Conference of AIDS Society of India or ASICON 2000, which will be opening just in two days time in Hyderabad, which is under a heavy torrential downpour right now. Welcome, Dr. Gilada, and please share Hello. your expert comments. Hello, it is nice to be on this panel, and particularly I have known Ketamim for many years. Unfortunate part is that we have not been able to uh, get him at our conference, despite every time trying very hard. Hello, Dr. Ketamim. Hello, Dr. Ketamim. Hello. Hello. I, sorry, I was uh, I was muted. Sorry. Hello. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine. Uh, for last several years, we have been trying to get you on board of our National AIDS Conference. Uh, we are uh, seriously concerned about tuberculosis and HIV because in HIV, most people die of tuberculosis. They don't die of HIV. For long, uh, we have been introduced to you by Bobby and Shoba, and we have been uh, uh, we have been always asking you to come and make it. Uh, a kind of a presence at our conference. So it's our misfortune that we could not have you till today. And maybe you can still come day after tomorrow. We have a conference on 6 to 8 uh, at Hyderabad. I don't know how feasible or uh, doable it is for you, but we can definitely host you there. I heard you uh, very well. And basically, you spoke of, uh, one thing which is uh, appealing is that by starting ART, you reduce tuberculosis by 67%. And that is something which is really marvelous. But the, uh, the very next statement of yours was, only early ART is not a solution. And that's what we need to be, uh, tell people, that uh, on one hand, our HIV people only talk about start early, start uh, when it, uh, test and treat. But they, they forget about underlying uh, problems like tuberculosis. Sometimes by starting ART without looking at tuberculosis underlying, we make people to suffer more and they have a lot of issues like iris and we have seen people of becoming sick or dying of iris rather than dying of HIV. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, Dr. Gilada. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. We now begin the open session for comments, remarks, clarifications, experience sharing, or questions from the participants. Participants, please use the chat function to type in your remarks or raise the virtual hand you see on your screen to speak for yourself. We already have a lot many comments pouring in. Uh, there is a comment from Zafar Kidwai of Bangladesh Star. Uh, Zafar says, thank you, Dr. Getahun, for this in-depth lecture on TB and HIV. Special thanks for the simple language you have used to speak about such a technical topic. We see the human face of TB and HIV in our city. My question is, if latent TB will remain in our population, then how will we end TB? And if we are slow in ending TB, then how will we end AIDS, as TB is a big killer of people with HIV? Dr. Getahun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, and thank you also for the compliment. Yes, uh, latent TB is an important uh, issue. If we want to tackle uh, uh, the TB epidemic, we need to tackle also uh, how to prevent uh, latent TB. And one of the unique additions of the end TB strategy uh, that uh, commits for uh, ending the TB epidemic by 2030 uh, is the addition of uh, addressing latent TB in a programmatic uh, manner, uh, par particularly for high-risk groups, uh, which have the highest risk of developing uh, TB following infection. And that's why now uh, we here at WHO take this uh, matter uh, seriously and currently uh, are um, undergoing development of policies and also implementation tools how to expedite um, this uh, intervention. 
And there are also uh, modeling studies that actually showed uh, with uh, only the implementation of uh, managing Latin TB uh, up to um, I need to um, uh, quite a number of uh, a b b burden of disease uh, can be prevented and we if we combine that with the treatment of active TB in a massive um, manner we can also reach our targets thank you thank you uh, participants please keep on using the chat function to type in your questions or comments or raise your virtual hand which you see on the screen to speak for yourself uh, we have a comment from Anuradha from India uh, she says I have learned that the government is providing tests and drugs for drug resistant tuberculosis and also for HIV treatment for free but taxpayers or donor money is covering this cost is this not a serious issue as funds are limited and dwindling also at the same time drug resistance to TB drugs and ART both are not ending in fact we are having we are seeing more of resistance how do we tackle this yes yeah, so this brings the question of um, uh, the hot topic that is currently being discussed globally universal health coverage and uh, people shouldn't uh, uh, really uh, choose uh, between you know paying for their treatment and also you know for other their basic necessities so that's why now in uh, globally there is uh, universal health, you know uh, care and coverage movement which we should also make sure TB is part of uh, that movement and that is the only way that we can ensure uh, sustainable uh, funding uh, sustainable financing uh, to and bring the disease to to end uh, relying only on donors will not bring a lasting solution thank you uh, dr archana <coughs> trivedi from the union office in delhi uh, would like to say something uh, dr archana are you there yeah uh, I would like to uh, share about uh, our session which is at uh, community space uh, so save the date 11th October at 1 p.m. for this 40, 48th Union World Health Lung Health Conference at Guadalajara Mexico our theme uh, uh, is what works engaging mind space of community overreaching them efficient and effective way to NTB by 20 25 in India it's a fish bowl discussion and we invite you all to uh, give your suggestions and your uh, your inputs of what works and if it works does it really works and what doesn't work so thank you all and I wish uh, you all over there and um, eminent journalists and communication experts have agreed to be part of this session Shobhaji, Bobby and Joe Oliver and uh, patients few patients have also agreed to participate in the session so let's uh, all meet over there and uh, propose few modalities through which we can reach the mind space of the community and just not uh, reach the community Thank you, Shobhaji. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Dr. Samuel Masoi of the National TB Program, Kenya, and we would like to hear his comments. Dr. Masoi, please. Uh, I just want to thank Dr. Gitahu for the good presentation. I think it is very educative, very simple the way he has presented, but I wanted him to clarify on the treatment of the Latin TB. Is it a master TB? We have really going to look at NTB by 2030 and also HIV. So uh, part Latin TB means really harboring the bacteria, the mycobacteria that causes TB in a very a low level of uh, activity so to speak that's why we call it you know latin sometimes they call it also dormant 
So five, with treatment, we can kill and finish those dormant or less active mycobacteria while they are still harbored in the lung parenchyma. And people living with HIV and children less than five years old and other high-risk group have a highest chance of uh, converting this dormant and less active mycobacteria into active disease. And to stop that, we have to provide treatment. And we have different modalities and different regimens of treatment. And uh, that, ha that has to be done. And it can also prevent the development of TB, you know, between, among HIV positives, between uh, 40 to 70 percent. So, which is really a substantial reduction of risk, particularly when you consider the, uh, the risk of days in people living with HIV if they develop uh, TB. So, it has to be taken seriously and it has to be addressed accordingly. Thank you. We have a comment from uh, Ashok Ramsarup, who is a very uh, senior uh, radio program producer for South African Broadcasting Corporation. He has produced several radio programs uh, for SABC. Uh, Ashok says that I have heard that Gene Expert, which was a breakthrough TB diagnostics tool, is now being used in Kenya for HIV testing too. Please share more details about this, as this may be a good way to join forces. And then there will be another question from Kenya also on this. But uh, uh, Dr. Getahun, would you like to say something on this? So can you repeat, please, the question? Okay. Uh, he says that uh, uh, gene expert, which we all of us know it has been a breakthrough diagnostics tools for diagnosing TB, is now being used for HIV testing too. So please uh, share more details about this. Gene expert is not used for HIV testing at this point in time. It is only uh, used for uh, diagnosing TB. However, there are attempts to probably use the platform of gene expert for measuring viral load, not HIV testing, but measuring viral load, and that. Uh, um, is under development as far as I know, but I am I'm, I'm not sure that it has been uh, f completed and is ready for uh, for use. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Pauline from Kenya. Uh, Pauline says, Dr. Getahun, greetings from Africa. Hope you know Kenya was the first country uh, which uh, which has uh, it has recently launched the urine test for TB. Please share more details if this is important is an important public health intervention, uh, particularly for PLHIV, and are other countries following it? Yes. So the urine test, what we call urine lamb, uh, is yes. an important test that is recommended by WHO for people living with HIV um, that have specific uh, clinical conditions, and one being if their CD4 count is less than 100 uh, or if they are living in a peripheral facility or in a peripheral um, uh, condition where it is not possible to do uh, genetic, uh, CD4 count but if they presented with what we call uh, danger signs, which is uh, having, you know, uh, fever, you know, respiratory uh, difficulty in breathing, which means basically um, that they are in acute uh, clinical condition. So this uh, test would be extremely, extremely useful to diagnose and also to help the decision, the clinical decision to put uh, these people on TB uh, uh, treatment. However, uh, the urine lamb is not recommended for HIV negatives or even for those HIV positive people, the people living with HIV, 
who has a higher CD4 count or who are not in a very acute clinical condition. So its use is extremely important and it can really uh, give us uh, the results in 20 minutes and it can also be used in peripheral facilities where we uh, always have problem of having uh, complicated and sophisticated tests. So it's a very important uh, test and that we need to promote for HIV positives in peripheral settings particularly. Thank you. Uh, participants, please use the chat function to type in your comments, questions or remarks or raise the virtual hand you see on your computer screen to speak yourself. We have David Bryden of Results with us. Thanks, David, for joining us. Uh, would you like to ask your question yourself, please? Yes, thanks very much for the presentation. It's been really helpful. I wanted to ask a question about how many people living with HIV are aware that they should be taking TB preventive therapy, um, IPT, isoniazid preventive therapy. My sense is that it's actually very low, and so my question is how can we make people more aware that they should be taking these uh, antibiotics to prevent uh, tuberculosis? Um, there seems to be a real lack of patient education going on. So, thanks, thanks, David. Um, yes, it's true. Um, the knowledge um, of people living with HIV that they have to uh, use preventive treatment. I, I don't have any data. I don't remember any uh, uh, study uh, that actually uh, uh, showed us the magnitude of uh, uh, knowledge and awareness. But it is an important task, an important task. That's why we need to uh, have more of engagement of patients and communities and also to uh, really strategize and uh, um, develop uh, demand generation models at the community level uh, so that you know this level of awareness is, is um, uh, included into the response both for HIV as well as for, for TB. So that's a very good point. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Getahun, for me and for many of us, it has been a learning to see the scientific evidence on TB, HIV co-infection since 1983, when the first few cases were diagnosed of HIV. The scientific evidence has been piling up since then. It also makes me wonder, then how can we avoid delays in developing and rolling out collaborative activities to save lives from premature deaths? What could we have done better? And what should we do better to roll out these collaborative TBHIB activities? So, as I mentioned earlier in my presentation, the implementation of the uh, collaborative TBHIB activities recommended by WHO estimated to uh, basically, uh, you know, save up to um, almost 10 million lives of people living with HIV. And this means that we have the interventions and the tools. The problem we have is the extent of implementation and the scale up of implementation. And that's why we need to intensify our efforts, but to utilize the existing tools than the existing interventions so that we will be able to uh, avert and save more more lives. So basically the challenge of implementation can vary from one region to the other or from one country to, to the other. But the bottom line is the lack of commitment mostly from uh, stakeholders dealing with people living with HIV 
in terms of making TB high in their priority. And it could be understandable that there are competing priorities, you know, than TB, but TB is a curable disease and people living with HIV shouldn't die of TB because we can diagnose and we can cure it. So, more or less, more, moreover, even if we provide ART, people living with HIV still have five-fold increased risk of TB compared to HIV negatives. So this really shows that it, the importance of TB for HIV stakeholders is really to be uh, on the top list of, of, of their priorities. So I think we need to work on that one and when we come into uh, programs also there should be a, a, a forum, a platform of more coordination and collaboration between managers, between scientists, between researchers really to make sure that TB and HIV are uh, taught uh, together and particularly we have to look into where um, uh, the problem, the magnitude is uh, significant, like in Sub-Saharan Africa. So we need activism, we need advocacy, we need demand generation, and we need really holding uh, those responsible for um, the care and treatment of people living with HIV, that TB is really an important item that has to be on top of their agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Getaun. Uh, I, I request the participants to keep on sending your remarks and comments using the chat function to type in or raising the virtual hand you see on the screen to speak yourself. We have a question from Sumadhi of Thailand. Uh, Sumadhi, thanks Dr. Getaun for a very good presentation and lecture and wants to know what non-health factors are slowing down rollout of collaborative activities for TB HIV and also will the Moscow meeting help bridge such partnerships between health and non-health ministries? Yeah, so uh, TB uh, of course it's primarily a disease, uh, a health problem, but there are several factors that contribute uh, to it, you know, be it uh, how to get infected or how to develop TB or how not to access diagnosis and treatment. So TB is the disease of the poorest of the poor. And these are people who are left behind, who are marginalized. And these are people who are immigrants. These are people who are urban dwellers. These are people who are living in impoverished uh, situations. And these are people who are using drugs. So TB and the same, it shares also the same uh, problem with, with HIV. Um, so we need to have also a multi a sectoral approach, how to deal with this, regardless that it is really a, a core you know, health problem, And but I think the interventions should go beyond health, as you rightly said. And that's why we are very much hopeful that uh, the uh, ministerial meeting next month in Russia, which actually has not only ministers of um, health, but also ministers of social affairs, ministers of justice, and other ministers where we can also uh, be able to discuss about uh, multi-sectoral response. And this will also pave the way for the uh, 2018 high-level high meeting in the UN General Assembly that can also garner uh, the political momentum and commitment really to raise the profile of TB into uh, the highest political level that uh, is, for example, the responsibility of heads of state and prime ministers and really 
uh, to mobilize the political structure so that uh, all those factors, the non health factors, can also be addressed. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Dr. Gelada who wants to know why has there not been much research in finding new anti TB medicines, especially if you compare with the progress happening with anti HIV treatment? Is it mainly because TB is a problem of developing countries and the poor people? And how can we boost TB R&D? Uh, answer for the question is included in the question. Yes, it's true because TB is a disease of the poorest of the poor and it's the disease of mostly of the developing countries and uh, the regional resources, the investment. If you really look into what has been invested uh, on TB research compared to what we need is very, very significant. And um, that's why we need to raise also the profile of TB research as part of our effort to mobilize research and also to end TB as a public health uh, problem. We need that. Thank you. Uh, we have a question uh, from Nortega in Manila. Uh, Nortega says that uh, despite evidence, the AIDS programs were slow in doing away with CD4 count and providing ART for all PLHIV, despite all the evidence and guidelines. How can we avoid such delays in converting scientific evidence into public health outcomes? So, so yes, I think research is required and research output has to be translated into policy and program and practice. And for this, there should be close collaboration and linkage of researchers and program managers and policy makers, be it at global level, at national level, and even local level. So this is a, a sort of um, interaction and it should be call for both researchers as well as policy makers to find forum to interact and to share information. And also even for researchers, uh, I would call that uh, the end product of a research shouldn't be publication. It has to go really go and impact people's lives and also policies. Thank you. Uh, Dr. P.S. Sarma is here. And uh, would uh, Dr. Sarma, would you like to say something? I mean, am, I, am I audible, madam? Can you hear yes, me? Very, yes, we can hear you very clearly. Uh, okay, madam. So, greetings from NATCON. I mean, I'm happy to inform see, Dr. Gilada here. And Dr. Gilada is also a faculty in our NATCON, madam. That's why I wanted to share that point. And we'll be having a session on a Asian TV during the conference, in the scientific session. Okay, thank you. So, uh, we are a lot, lot many conferences are lined up in the near future. The 2017 National Conference of TB Association of India will be held in Andhra Pradesh, uh, India NATCON 2017, uh, sometimes in December. The 2017 National Conference of AIDS Society of India or ASICON 2017 begins later this week. Then we have the 48th Union World Conference on Lung Health opening next week. And WHO Global Ministerial Conference will take place next month. Follow us as the CNS correspondence team will be bringing updates and we do hope that these events mobilize stronger responses for ending AIDS and ending TB and also improving progress towards sustainable development. Let us hope this happens as TB advocate and ICMR DG is the new Deputy Director General of WHO and with you Dr. Getahun and other participants let's hope change begins happening in boosting R&D for TB drugs and in really ending both these epidemics. We now come to the close of this lecture. We thank Dr. Helasis Getahun, whose insightful talk surely inspired us to think differently and in a more integrated manner. Thanks to Dr. Gilada also for making it despite all the na all nature's obstructions. All the best for ASICON 2017, Dr. Gilada. 
This lecture yeah, got streamed. On, this lecture got streamed on YouTube. The recording and audio podcast will be made available to all of you very soon. Till we meet again at next month's SDM Health Justice Lecture. Goodbye and best wishes to all of you.